Hello there! Welcome back to Let's Play Dead Space 3 Part 2, your host, Fighter Fighter 5! Five. In the last episode, we basically went through and killed a bunch of unitologists and found out that, um, well, everyone's out to kill me again. Because that's pretty much the premise of every Dead Space game. Because everyone's out to kill me and out to betray me and everything of the sort. Seriously, by this point, you should have played the previous two games. If you haven't, well, you owe yourself a favor to do so. But anyway, in the last episode, before I got rudely interrupted a multitude of times and got completely, um, out of uh, topic, I, I was explaining the different difficulty modes within this. You have a variety of different difficulties, in addition to the ones that you'll standardly see. Now, you'll see uh, difficulties like normal, casual, hard, and uh, impossible. Impossible is making a return. You'll also see classic, pure survival, and hardcore is making a return as well. Have you reached the extraction team yet? All dead. Danik got here first. Oh, fuck. Then find a way out of the city. I'm coming in with the Eudora. Washington Station's not far. I can ride one of the trains out. Good plan. See you on the tracks. <laughs> so yeah, um, the differences between the three modes that are in addition to beating the game on any of the four difficulties that I mentioned, casual, normal, hard, and impossible, um, you have the three modes that I mentioned. Classic mode is very true to the original games. The aiming mode is set to classic, which you'll probably see. I don't know if it's set to it right now. I forgot. I'll set it to it so you can kind of see the two unlockables that you can get. But um, if you beat the game on classic, you get classic aiming, and you also get the devil horns, which is the foam finger that you see me having here. In addition to this, if you beat the game on... Where are you going? I'm not... I'm not I don't trust you. It's not that I don't trust you. It's that I, I just don't trust you. Shot you in the back. Oh, yeah. Come on. I can do it. I can get out of here. I'll explain more as I go. Let's see if I can do this. If I face the other direction, and then upon... Yes! Damn it. Oh. No trains. Maybe not. Never mind. Okay. I made it to the train station. What about Danik's men? I lost some of the panic. This outbreak may buy us some time. We'll grab a train. Let's go. No good. Looks like the train was getting refitted with a new power car. So? We're gonna have to put it back together. We'll do it fast. Danik's gunships are far off. We'll try to draw them away then. Be fast. Yes, Ma. Seriously. Train assembly incomplete. Please attach engine and fuel car before initiating departure sequence. But yeah, as I was saying. The um, classic mode is very true to the original games. It's on hard as well. Uh, pure survival is entirely resource based. So basically, what happens is you have to try and craft everything that you have in the benches. You can't pick any a health or ammo up from dead bodies. All right, Norton. The train's hooked up and ready to head out the south gate. You can't miss it. It'll be the only thing moving. All right, understood. I'll close in once you clear the city. If you're ready for pickup, this is going to be tricky. It is indeed. But anyway, he's going to interrupt me again. Norton, you still haven't told me what happened to Ellie. Now it's not the best time, I think. Is she alive? Last I saw her was at Keyhole Station. She said she was onto something big, shocked out to some secret coordinates, and then we lost contact. I know your ex-girlfriend very well. She's still alive, and mad as hell we haven't found her yet. How did you know she was my ex? Ass. Oh yeah. Hell yeah. Ah, here comes the cavalry. But anyway, as I was saying, pure survival is entirely resource based. Which ship is the Eudora? The bigger one that just flew over your head. And then hardcore is your traditional one from Dead Space 2 where you have to beat the game without dying. It's not so much you, you can save, but you can't die. Seriously, you cannot die. Upon beating Pure Survival, you get Mark II Overclock Resource Packages, and upon beating the game on Hardcore Difficulty, you get something called Retro Mode, and I'll show those off to you at some point soon. Oh yeah! I'm making it! Don't worry! I can get there! Grab my hand, guy that came from nowhere! 
Help me! Captain, I've got it! Take us out of here now! And into fart space we go. And that's pretty much it. Oh yeah. Oh, oh man. Oh, I had one hell of a weird dream last night. Oh god, it was real. Who's that? A boy. Kid, kid. You leave him behind. He's dead. Dad had killed him and his mother. I'm sorry. Yeah. Don't be. We're not friends. Well, thanks for the rescue back there. Try harder next time. Guard, I think we can. Yeah. Good, we're almost there. Get your asses to the bridge. You heard the man. Now, I might as well explain something here. As I was saying, classic mode is like the original games. And then you have uh, your pure survival mode, which is strictly resource based. You can't pick up any items at all, like ammo packs and med packs from bodies. Um, you have to craft it all in crafting stations. And then in hardcore, you cannot die once. If you die, you have to go right back to the beginning of the game. No excuses. That's it. You die. That's it. Go down there, and there's a door at the very far end. On the right side is an artifact. I'm not gonna go all the way down there, because it'll take too much time. Sup, bitch? I can make my rig tilt on command. 15 seconds to target. Standing by to D-Shop. All right, people, we're going in blind, so stay tight on that exit vector. Rosen, count it out. Exit beacon locked. D-Shocking in five, four, three, Two, one. Hallelujah! Now we're in Star Wars. The hell is that? The moon. What's left of one? That's no moon. It's a space. Oh shit! Oh shit! Okay, we're good now. Christ, this place is a junkyard. More like a graveyard. Any sign of Ellie's ship? I'm reading several transponders, but none of them are ours. According to the registry, they're sovereign colonies warships. Are you serious? They'd be over 200 years old. Wait, wait. I'm getting something. It's an SOS coming from that ship dead ahead. The CMS Roanoke. It could be Ellie. Yeah, let's hope so. All right, Rosen, close to 500 clicks. All right, sir. There are red specks. The lights. The beacons. Watch out for them. No. My! Rosen, get us out of here! They're not mine! I don't want them! Seriously, GTFO! Uh oh. Oh god! Holy crap! Holy shit! Get out of here, quickly! Okay, here's your round of applause. <clears throat> Take this. Here. Grab some of that paneling and seal up that doorway. Says when are you giving the order? Cause you're a bitch! Oh Says somebody else has a fucking plan. Look, I'll explain as I go. Carver, where can I find an EVA suit? Good. Down that way! Jesus, I have to tell you twice! Well I should ask you, but whatever. Quickly! Isaac and I must run quickly before the gravity like fails or something. Ah, shit. That's, knowing my luck, it's probably going to align to, like, the wall or something. Probably the glass. Ah! Ugh. Oh! Oh! <laughs> I shouldn't have said anything. Oh, God. Uh, uh. Quickly, you must run for your life. You know why? Because, well, if you wait too long, the glass might crack. And you'll be the laughing stock of... Why didn't I burn? I thought I was going to burn there for a minute. Oh! Now my rig is red. I hate the color red, though. Oh, oh. Hey, it's a suit! Sweet! Oh! Let me just pull it down! And then... Oh. Uh, 
Come on, baby. We can get. Now watch my chest in cave like a vortex. <laughs> no! Just kidding. I don't. I'm not dead yet. I'm not dead yet. Okay. Oh, oh, oh no! 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 Get here, piece of shit! Then what? <laughs> no, I don't think they want to do that. I don't think they want to soil their suits. Oh, blown free! <laughs> now engage the awesome part. Just this actually this part. Is... I can't slow it down. Try to steer towards me. I can almost reach you. Whoa, mine, mine! Now this part is pretty freaking awesome. Why? Because it's pretty much reminiscent of Dead Space 2's sequences that are very similar to this. I actually really enjoyed these sequences. Where are you? I'm coming. Just hang on. I'm nowhere near you. Just just keep keep doing what you're doing. I'll, I'll get there eventually. Seriously, I will get there eventually. Ow! I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. So basically just dodge the mines, because that's pretty much all you can do at this point. Also, dodge the giant pieces of ship. Hey, watch it! Watch it! I can't see around it! The part's growing! Oh no! Oh no! Oh yeah! I got it! I got it! Shannon, under control! I'm full thrusters! Uh, it's slowing! Uh, okay. Uh, okay. There we go. Jesus. Let's not do that again. Can you make it to that cargo dock? Yeah, yeah, you think there's air on board? Ellie's SOS is coming from somewhere inside, so let's hope so. So yeah, welcome to the actual space part of Dead Space. Where the view is magnificent, and everything else isn't so much. Seriously. Oh, God, it looks like the power's out everywhere. There's no way to activate the cargo doors. I think there's a manual crank on the other door, see it? Right. I'll see if I can get inside. Now what you just saw there was something called Kinesis Torque, and that's brand new to Dead Space 3. Well, we've got air. <laughs> and dust. Any sign of Ellie? No. Looks like I'm the first person through here in a long time. I'll try to open the cargo doors. Hang on. Now what I really like about this, like in the traditional Dead Space, is usually when the lights go out and all the power gets lost, you won't see the visor light up like this and illuminate certain parts of the walls and stuff. You won't usually see that very often. In this game, what I really love about it is that it actually makes each suit's visor unique with their glow and the lights on the walls and stuff. It's really cool and really well done. It's getting hard to breathe. How much longer? Yeah, we're working as fast as we can. Mark's really pale. I can't stop the bleeding. Shit. Hey, Isaac. Okay, meet me at the door. I can let you in from this side. All right, there. Now get in here. Give me a hand. It's locked. It's locked. It's locked. It's locked. Oh, there you go. You lied to me. Isaac, Ellie's SOS is coming from deeper inside this ship, but I can't leave Rosen in lock. Send me the coordinates. I'll go check it out. Here you go. Hey, don't stray too far. That's an order. Yes, ma. I put me on a leash, then I won't go that far. But screw you, I'm going as far as I want to go. I love how the door sound stopped abruptly there. But anyway, I'm gonna cut off this cutscene because it's pretty funny. A dead end. Looks like someone shut a bulkhead for quarantine. Can we cut through it? No. That did it. And there's a bench on the same circuit. Bench? With all the parts lying around here, I bet I can make a better weapon than this one. Yeah, yeah, smart thinking. Alright, so now to end this episode, I'm going to show you a bit about the bench, because this is where you're supposed to actually kind of utilize it. At this point, you won't have that many resources in order to be able to use it, but I'll show you basically what you can and can't really do with the bench when you get more resources and stuff like that. So, 
I have a whole bunch of stuff here, and I've also got the Planet Cracker Plasma Cutter. If you have a save file of Dead Space 2, you'll get that. So let me just explain this, and then we'll end the episode here. So the bench is probably one of the most pivotal point of Dead Space 3, and probably where the most of the magic happens with your weapon crafting and also item modifications. As I mentioned on pure survival mode, this is where you do everything. You cannot find any health and ammo anywhere. You need to craft it here. So, getting onto it. Crafting, you can craft brand new weapons or modify and change parts of your current weapons. I can't do anything with the with the devil with the devil horns, but I can actually keep that. I'm going to keep that because it's a good weapon to use. So I'm going to modify this. Actually, no, I'm going to create a brand new weapon from the ground up just to show you what this is like. So you can use a frame that you either already have or you can craft a new frame out of resources. Now, I'm going to use an overclocked compact frame just because I can. It does more damage and has more statistic boosts. Now, you can either put a plasma core, pneumatic torch, rip core, or telemetry spike on them. And new tools give you other things like Tesla cores and military engines. So let me put... Um, actually, no, I'm not going to go with an overclocked ca compact frame. I'm going to go with a heavy elite frame. Because if I put a telemetry spike on there, you get the javelin spiker from the original Dead Space 2. So that's what the tools are for. The tools are basically what give you your different projectiles in which you can fire. Telemetry spikes will allow you to fire the javelin spears. On the lower tool, if you decide to put like an, extra, an electrocution or explosive module, you'll get the traditional javelin spiker from the original game. Now what does that do? The explosive or electrocution module will actually allow you to either send an electric shock out of the last bolt that you fire or make it explode. And this really helps in large packs of enemies or enemies that you need to do a lot of damage too quickly. So these are definitely, this is a good combination to use. On the upper tool tip, you can change how it fires. So the default tip is your general javelin spear. It'll just fire straight forward, that's it. Now if you go to um, a diffraction torus, it's basically a chain gun. The repeater gives you kind of a burst fire kind of thing. And the rail accelerator is your traditional firing and, and impaling javelin. So it'll g kind of give that, it'll just give you a bit more of power to it. Um, and if you want to craft new tips, you can also craft something else called the Conic Dispersal, which changes it into a shotgun, which is freaking cool. So we've done that. Attachments are basically little support things. You can put scopes on things. And um, supports are fairly important because it'll increase damage and a variety of different attributes for not only you, but your partner as well. So that's definitely helpful and uh, good to remember. So I'm not going to put anything on here yet unless I, I have to put an explosive, explosive explosion amplifier. An attachment to uh, put acid bath because acid bath is definitely helpful. Now upgrade circuits. This is kind of where you'd put your power nodes in the original games because the benches in the original games were very different from what they are in this game. In the original game, they actually just basically all they did was you could put power nodes into either damage, reload, speed, or clip. But in this one, you can get a little bit more fine-tuny with them and create several clips that will actually boost certain parameters in multiple fields. So basically, the way upgrade circuits work is different from the power node system. The power node system was kind of like a... It was like a puzzle kind of thing where you'd input... It was basically like a tree. But this, it's pretty much simple. So construct a new circuit... You're going to have it 2 reload, 2 damage, 2 rate of fire, 2 damage. I usually go with rate of fire and 2 damage, or 2 damage and 2 clip. That's usually what I go for. I go, I'm go. i going to go with 2 damage and 2 rate of fire, um, and 2 damage, 2 clip. Uh, 2 of these, because it definitely helps. Uh, as you can see, my damage is already like nearly maxed out, and this helps a lot, trust me. Boom, and then one more uh, damage and clip. Damage and rate of fire. All right, perfect. Bam, that's all you really need. Um, I probably might change this around and fiddle with it a little bit more in later parts off screen, but that's pretty much it. That's pretty much your gun for now. So I'm gonna put it in the, I'll put it in this slot. I'm gonna keep the foam finger because the foam finger is like the pivotal funny joke weapon, but it also helps during a lot of really tough sequences. So remember that. And that's basically your weapon crafting. Blueprints will give you basically set blueprints of weapons that are already pre-built. You can create your own blueprints, as you may or may not have seen the option for me to do that. Um, you can create your own blueprints blueprints, and share them with your co-op partner. Um, weapon upgrades, it's strictly the upgrade circuit section. 
Crafting items, you can share and sell consumable items while also crafting them. So when you sell things, they've done away with the credit system. And they've actually made it so that once you sell something, it'll actually cut it down into pieces for you. So, for instance, the meta packs are made of somatic gel. So if you sell it, you'll get some somatic gel back. If you buy it, it costs 240 somatic gel for a large med pack. Now, tungsten torque bars are really important. Tungsten is actually kind of hard to come by in this game, and tungsten torque bars are essentially your power nodes um, in the previous games. Because in the previous games, you remember, they always ask you to keep at least one power node on you at all times. That's because if you find a secret room where there's a power node on the door that you need to use to get in there, you need a tungsten torque bar to be able to open certain doors. So it acts like the power nodes of the original two games. But it's different, so always a good idea to craft as many of these as you can possibly craft, as long as you have enough tungsten. You won't find a whole lot of tungsten in this game. So, that's kind of a thing to remember. And then you're safe, that's where you keep and sell and manage all your equipment. You sell stuff, it breaks it down into a multitude of components for you, so that you can build anything you want. So that is basically the weapon bench, and I am your host, Arsene Scepter 5665 and I'll see you guys back in the next episode as we continue onward and do a little bit more with stuff like that. So I hope you enjoyed, especially my elaborate tutorial on the weapon bench, because it's definitely going to help you out a lot. Also, one point that I will add on top of the weapon bench section is there is something called the weapon bench arena where you can actually go into the weapon bench, craft your own weapons, and test them on dif different difficulties in its own kind of environment in order to be able to get kind of the feel for what you want to craft later in the game. Sound good? Cool. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye! <laughs>